First, there's a line from a song that says simply, two hearts are better than one. It's a sentiment that might be endorsed by the couple you're about to meet, partners in life and partners in art. Before Emily Stark Menig can paint, okay. she has to prepare her canvas. Making the canvas wet with water just so that it will absorb the color that I'm gonna put down. Ooh, I always forget to roll my pants up. <laughs> Where she works is an inspiration to her, a studio she recently moved into in the old Fort Andros Mill in Brunswick. Emily, how happy are you to be in oh this my studio? God. <laughs> I'm so, I'm over the moon. John Bisbee's studio is in the same building, a short ride away in an old elevator that's like something out of a Stephen King story. John Bisbee and Emily Stark Menig don't just share a passion for art, they share a passion for life, which is why they're partners. Once settled in his studio, Bisbee is also ready to work. First though, some entertainment with his newly acquired karaoke microphone. Is this more fun than you've ever had in your life? I have to say it is, Rob, actually. I find your questions to be quite proven. I love this part. For both Bisbee and Stark Menig, having fun is part of creating good art. Okay, that's pro. And the last couple of years have brought Emily her greatest success, with more people than ever before buying her bold, vibrant paintings. And I just get, I get so many ideas all the time, so I'm just like firing on all cylinders. It used to be that John Bisbee was by far the better known artist, renowned for his sculptures made of nails. Always nails. That is more work than I've done in a month. But when the pandemic hit in 2020, a major out-of-state project that John had been planning for more than a year fell through. Shield your eyes. It's like staring in the sun. And after doing nail sculptures for three decades, he quit. When you decided that you would step away yeah. from the nails for a while, were you kind of discouraged and a little depressed, or yeah. did you feel kind of liberated and feel good about it? Yes, totally, <laughs> both those things. For about a year and a half, he focused exclusively on something new, music. How would you describe your singing? <laughs> uh, I'm getting better, yeah, not my gift. I think my gift is actually as a writer. He spent his days writing and playing songs. Just one touch, and we explode. Had you ever done anything professionally with still music? Haven't. <laughs> still haven't. I never had a gig or anything. Um, but I'm just obsessed with um, trying to write and sing and, and play uh, original tunes. Artists who stick with what they've done successfully before can get stale. Look at this, so full, heavy. That's what you look for, right? <laughs> this is gonna be good. <laughs> These two would rather toss the dice. Um, so I'm just gonna, yeah, just kinda go for it here. Okay. Um... When you do that, you don't know really how it's gonna turn out. Do oh you? gosh, no, but that's the exciting part. I like things that are 90% um, chance of failure. One day after months of not creating any art, Bisbee picked up a brush and started painting. In sculpture, he's a master. In painting, a novice. But it's so fun, Rob, because I don't know anything, you know? And so everything is a discovery. And that's a great way to get up every day knowing you're going to make a discovery. Painting, he says, is rewarding in a way that sculpting never was. The nails were never emotional. The nails were never poignant. They were never maybe even that interesting. That, um, that I find hard to believe because people react yeah. so strongly yeah. to your sculpture and have such enthusiasm yeah. for it. For you to say it was never emotional is striking. I, but I think it's also accurate. They were beautiful, and, and they had their own life. Um, but I don't know if it was an emotional life.
Emily and John have been together for 10 years, and it may be a cliche, but they really do seem to be soulmates. Um, it's the best. It's like, I couldn't, I really couldn't think of anything better that we get to share our crazy ideas with each other. It doesn't come as a great surprise that one of her favorite portrait subjects is John. This one, well, let's see, there's a lot of John over here. This is of John, this is, these are from a few years ago. It must be challenging to paint John because trying to capture the fabulousness is daunting. Oh, I'm up for the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's the best model. Uh, some people aren't. In art, sentimentality is frowned on, but it can be refreshing to see artists who are one another's biggest cheerleader in love with what they do and in love with each other. Getting to make art every day, it's, there's nothing better. I'm a very lucky guy. Yeah, I'm broke, but Emily's um, killing it uh, professionally right now. Um, she's keeping the old man alive. And so uh, I really am uh, I'm profoundly blessed. Wow, what a couple. I can't tell you how much fun it is to hang out with those two. Their energy is just infectious. You want to go out and create art even if you have no talent, which is the case for me. And they're just in love with what they do, in love with each other. It's really thrilling. I love it. And I love when Emily said the piece about how she goes after projects that there's like a 90% chance of failure. Yeah. What a way to look at it. Yeah, and I John's love line about, about starting every day. Every day brings a discovery. And he said, what, what could be better than that? Exactly. John Bisbee estimates he's done about 40 paintings so far, and he is finally sending some of them out into the world for sale. You can find more information about him and about Emily Stark-Menig in the 207 section of our New Center Main website and our app.